Hi guys, Daphne here, and in like three days, I think, hold on, in two days, no, three, three days, in three days, it's going to be the New Year's, which means that it's going to be 2016, which is kind of crazy, because I feel like 2014 just ended yesterday, and a year is not only half a day long, but it's, it, it's end, it's 2015 is ending, it's been a really crazy year, some really amazing books came out this year. And I wanted to share those with you. So this is my top 10 books of 2015. Some of them didn't come out in 2015. I just read them this year, but I wanted to include them because they're just that awesome. But most of them did come out this year. So these books aren't in any particular order. I do have one that's my favorite and I'll be putting that one last, but all the other ones are just this kind of big jumbled mess of amazingness. I also have hardly any of these books here on the shelves. I don't own them because I get most of my books from the library. So I'm going to be inserting little clips right about here of their cover and the editing software that I use is only allows me to put videos overlays in. So they're gonna be little mini videos of the uh, covers. Also if you hear weird noises, it's currently having a blizzard outside. There, yeah, it's, it's blizzarding. Alright, let's get started though because there are a lot of them. Okay, the first book that I loved was Paper Hearts by Meg Wiviot. And I recently read this book. Paper Hearts is written in verse, and it switches between the perspectives of two girls who are in Auschwitz during the Holocaust. And this book is gorgeously written. I loved how Meg Wiviot wrote this book. It's absolutely breathtaking. It's this perfect mix of being absolutely heartbreaking, but at the same time, stunningly beautiful. I loved this book. It didn't make me cry a ton, per se, but it was just so gorgeously written that I just... No words. It's so beautiful. Second book is A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I have a copy of this. Yay! Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, and it's a twist on Beauty and the Beast. I think I didn't know that it was a twist on Beauty and the Beast when I got it. I just saw that it was by Sarah J. Mass, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna read that. I still haven't read Queen of Shadows, though. I gotta do that, too. But... This book is about a girl named Feyre, and she kills a wolf in the forest and then gets taken away to a castle, basically, because it was, like, actually a fairy. So it's kind of like Beauty and the Beast, except it's Beauty and the Beast with fairies, which is really cool, and Feyre's really kick-butt, and I love her for that. The end of this book had such a bad cliffhanger, and I cannot wait to read the next one. And I've started, like, making theories in my head about certain things that were said near the end about what people saw and stuff, and I haven't really done that with a lot of books, so I'm kind of excited about that because maybe my theories will be correct! Next is Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman, and this is the sequel to Serafina, which is- they're both set in sort of medieval sort of world, but where dragons live side by side with humans in- sort of in their own world, sort of not. They have like an uneasy sort of pact. In Serafina, somebody gets killed and it looks like it's done by a dragon and Serafina who is half dragon half human which is her secret she has to help figure out really who killed this person and so it's kind of like a medieval murder mystery which is really interesting the cool thing about this series is that music is really heavily involved and I play the flute so music is really important to me and it was really interesting to see the way that it kind of was woven in and out of the plot and so it's kind of magical, almost, the music that Serafina plays, and that was really special. This is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, and this book is set in different alternate versions of London, and they each have a different, like, relationship with magic, and there's only two people in the world that can travel between them and use the magic to travel between them, and one of them is Cal, and so this is from his point of view. I love this concept of the worlds because they're all so unique, and the Cal's a really great character. I really loved reading about him. I can't wait for the next one of this either. The plot was just like kind of like a driving forward, just straight towards the end, which that's always a really good thing in a book. It just keeps you hooked. Next book I really liked was The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This is also the first book in a series, and it's set in a world where there are two types of blood. There's silver blood and red blood, and red blood is lower than silver blood, so silver bloods have higher status, and they also have, like, magical powers. And so it's set from the point of view of a girl named Mare Barrow, and she loses a red, but she finds out that she has a power like a silver. 
so she gets taken to the palace. And the thing that I loved about this book is that it was always keeping me on my toes. You thought you knew where the plot was going, right? And it's going and you're reading and that's okay, okay, things are turning out right. And then it just turns in this completely other direction. It's like really sharp turns while you're driving except you're reading and that's a really bad analogy, but whatever. And just in all different directions, but it all went together really nicely in the end. I loved seeing how they all kind of fit together, all these different plot points and twists, and I cannot wait to read the next one of this book. Yeah. Next book I really liked was The Game of Love and Death by Martha Brockenborough. Um, sorry if I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, that's highly possible. Uh, this book is set in Seattle in the 1930s, and it starts off with the love character and the death character. They're kind of like people but not people and they could take whatever form they'd like anyway and they're kind of timeless picks a person and love picks a person and it's their game right so they have they set a time period for those two people to either fall in love or not fall in love and if they fall in love they're fine and love wins and if they don't then death gets to kill the character very interesting love story it's absolutely gorgeous i really enjoyed reading this book and i was in absolute tears by the end of it the next two are merged because they're in the same series so the Bone Season and The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. These books are so utterly complicated, I'm not even going to try to explain what they're about. There's all these glossaries in them and everything, and they're really long. Um, I think they qualify as more modern high fantasy, but I really enjoyed reading them. Uh, not dry. At all. Like a lot of high fantasy books are. But these books are... Oh my goodness. Other books, whether plot just keeps going and going, these books, for sure. It's set in futuristic London. It's controlled by the Scion, and people who are clairvoyant are targeted. So Paige, the main character, is clairvoyant. She's a really rare type of clairvoyant, actually. She works in sort of the underground crime layer, which is also very intricate. She gets like kidnapped and brought to Oxford which is said not to exist and it finds out that there's like this entire alien race involved. So that's the plot of the first one and the second one's a continuation of that. Really what stuck out for me in these two books was the world building that Samantha Shannon does because again with the glossaries and like there's maps and just the layer upon layer of the underground and then the scion and then the other race and then all of the different types of clairvoyance just all intricately webbed together to form a really great world. There's supposed to be like seven other books too, which I'm so excited for. And then I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. It's a standalone, pretty short, but it is a bunch of different perspectives before and after a flu epidemic hits a futuristic Earth, and so everybody's basically wiped out except for some people, and so it's a bunch of perspectives leading up and during the epidemic and then like 15 years after the epidemic to see how the world has kind of put itself back together again. And it doesn't really tell you at first how all of the characters are really interwoven together and so I really had a fun time finding out how they were connected because all of them are. Second to last there is Egg and Spoon by Gregory Maguire, another one that wasn't published this year but I'm including anyway because it was really awesome. Gregory Maguire, if you didn't know, he's the author who wrote Wicked which is like the Broadway show and everything. Wicked's a really great book too. This book definitely has the sort of like odd quirky style that he writes with, which is really fun. Um, just a bunch of stuff that you completely didn't expect to be in the book. So this book is set during Tsarist Russia and it kind of pulls on some fairy tales like Baba Yaga. It's very odd, it's wonderful. It's about a young girl, her name is Elena, and her entire family is kind of starving. And so this really rich train comes through her village and she like, gets on it. She's like, I'm gonna go find what's happening. I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna get my brothers back from the war. I'm gonna get food for my family. And she goes on all these adventures. And last, but definitely not least, because this is my favorite book of the year, and it came out on October 6th, and I got, I met the author. Um, just absolutely wonderful. I love this book to no end, and my copy is with a friend right now, so I'm gonna be putting the cover right here. It is Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. Oh my goodness, this book. <laughs> you guys know how much I love this book. <sighs> I've probably raved on and bought it so much, but this book is just, I have, I have this whole thing about how much I love this book. So I'm going to go through that. Um, because I don't think I've ever really gone through the final, fine details about why I love this book so much. So if you didn't know, 
Carry On is the companion novel, sequel novel, sort of, to Fangirl by Rainbow Roat. Fangirl is about a girl who writes fanfiction for the Simon Snow series, which is sort of a play on Harry Potter. Um, and she writes fanfiction for two of the characters, Simon and Baz. Carry On is Rainbow Rowell's interpretation of fanfiction for Simon and Baz. It's not, she said that it's not Cass' version of the fanfiction, but it's not the actual Simon Snow 8th book. It is her actual own version, which is pretty cool. Carry On is very reminiscent of Harry Potter. There's a lot of Harry Potter aspects. It's, but for me, that really just kind of made it more significant and not less significant. It didn't take away from it. There's four things that I love this book for. The first one is boarding schools. I don't know what my fascination with boarding schools is about, but I just love books set in boarding schools. And this one's set in Watford, which is a magic boarding school. So I just like the, all the characters being in one spot and they're all doing their thing and going to school. And that just is fascinating for me. And I have no idea why. The second one, the magic is great. It's not like you know, Wingardium Leviosa. It's not typical Harry Potter spells. It's like, just like, based off of internet things, which is really cool, and I didn't recognize a lot of them because I'm not a great, like, yay, I'm on the internet. I'm not a great internet person. But to be honest, this was pretty amazing. The third one is that Simon and Baz are fantastic characters, and I love them so much. And the fourth one is a complete roller coaster of emotions. I laughed during this book, I cried and cried and cried during this book, and I like was so scared for these characters. You get really attached to Simon and Baz. So those are my top 10 books that I read during 2015. Woo! I can't wait for 2016 because there are so many really good books that I'm waiting for. Tell me in the comments below, um, what books you really loved about 2015 because maybe I'll find some other ones that I haven't read that I still should and maybe they'll be included in the 2016 amazing books wrap-up thing. Who knows? Right. Bye!